Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I'm here to talk about Adobe Photoshop CC. I'm not going to talk about the price of it, not going to talk about the cost of it. I'm just going to talk about all the cool things that I think they've added to Adobe Photoshop CC that you'll notice as you're playing with this Adobe Photoshop CC. Now, the first thing is, as soon as you open up Photoshop CC, it's going to ask you, would you like to pull in your presets from uh, past versions of Photoshop. If you select yes, you're going to start seeing your actions pull in, you're going to start seeing your brushes pull in, and all that stuff will be here. So all my actions that I ever saved in Photoshop CS6 are right here in Adobe Photoshop CC, which is awesome because before uh, you used to have to go into the CC file in the background, go ahead and copy all of it and bring it into, you know, all your, if you, when you upgrade it from one Adobe to the other. Now it asks you if you'd like to link them. The other thing you're going to need to pay attention to though, if you ever went to edit and went to preferences and changed any of the preferences here in, uh, in the background, you're going to have to fix them for Adobe Photoshop CC. It does not pull those in. It'll pull in your presets. Those are things like uh, your brushes, your actions, um, so on and so forth, but it will not change your preferences. So like me, in my performance tab, I make sure that I, I give a lot of available RAM to Photoshop. I want Photoshop to be taking up most of my RAM so that all the edits I'm doing happen a lot faster. You're going to need to increase this. I think the default is like 60% or something. I change it to 80%. Now my history states the default for that is about 20. So if you go to the histories tab as you're working and you're working a lot, 20 is not a whole lot of history states. I would prefer to have something way above 100, 160, somewhere like that. But the more history states, the more cash it takes. So you might want to keep it uh, on, on the down low on that one. You don't want to go too high. Um, so once you've selected that though, if you go to edit and then go down here and go to sync settings now, do this real quick so I can go back, you'll see that it's syncing this. So there's 64 kilobytes of 538 kilobytes that this is syncing to my email address. So if I were to log into a different computer and I go to sync settings, it's going to pull in my settings from the other computer. If you want to know what your, uh, what settings are syncing, your preferences are synced, your actions are synced, your brushes are synced swatches, styles, gradients, all that stuff gets synced right here into uh, Adobe Photoshop CC from computer to computer. So now let's go ahead and get into some of the fun stuff like uh, what happened in Adobe Camera Raw. Now I already have a little play that I've been doing here so I'll just go ahead and delete that and show you. As you go through Camera Raw not a whole lot of settings have changed. Um, what they did add was a gradial, uh, a radial filter, not a gradial filter, a radial filter. So this filter is basically like a, an oval or a circle that you can put around an object to single it out. And you can do it subtly, you can do it uh, with a lot of uh, dramatic tone. So I'm going to add a new one here. I'm going to drop the exposure quite a bit so you can see the difference. So, oops, let me delete that one just play with one for now. So this is the new radial filter. You can put a circle, or oval, uh, some type of radial effect around one single area. How this is different from the adjustment brush, uh, I'm kind of dumbfounded. It doesn't really change that much. It's a new feature, but it's not necessarily something that we haven't had already. Um, so as you're looking at this, the effect here can either happen on the outside of the circle or on the inside of the circle. So make sure you have the right one selected. And it, other than that, it's exactly like the adjustment brush. Let me show you what I'm talking about with the adjustment brush though. Let me go ahead and delete this and I'll show you the same thing that you can do with the adjustment brush. So with the adjustment brush, what we could do before is just paint out that area, which is basically the exact same thing as that radial filter. However, it gives us a little bit more control. So did they really give us something new? Not really a whole lot in my opinion. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and delete that too. And I will open this in a new tab. Just uh, oops, I want to open that up. The one great thing that we did get though is Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. And I really do enjoy that because sometimes you'll forget something when you're in Camera Raw. You didn't open it as a smart object. You have to close it. You have to go back into it. But there's also some cool things that we can now incorporate from Camera Raw into our, uh, our normal workflow. So I could duplicate this, Control J, go to Filter, and up here in the filters I can go to the Camera Raw filter. And in the camera raw filter, I can go ahead and, and use uh, my noise reduction really high. So I can get rid of that noise that was up here in the clouds, bring down that detail because I don't need it because it's up there in the clouds, so I can get rid of that noise. But what it does is it, it kind of destroys my lower part of my image here. 
But if I press OK and bring it in, back here into Photoshop, now it's on a separate layer. So what I can do is I can make a mask and I can paint. So now I've got selective noise reduction on a much better scale, you know, because the noise reduction that has always been in Photoshop, well, at least uh, from Camera Raw and Camera Raw 6.0 and higher, has been great. So now you can actually use that noise reduction, not globally, but locally, by doing something like this with the Camera Raw filter. What else can we do with the Camera Raw filter? Um, we can go ahead and make a stamp of this. I'm going to press Control, Control Shift Alt E and go back into that Camera Raw filter. And let's say I wanted to increase the uh, the temperature of it a little bit. I can go ahead and do that. And then I can also add a mask to that and brush out the areas I didn't want to affect with that increase in the warmth. Maybe I just wanted to warm up the stuff that was in the background. So again, a lot more control over uh, different effects that were awesome in Camera Raw because the the uh, well, the temperature filter in Camera Raw, in my opinion, works a lot better than the color balance uh, adjustment tab in uh, Photoshop. So when you go into color balance, it doesn't quite warm up the photo the same way. So if we go ahead and, and lower that and, and decrease that, it's not the same effect. All right, so if we get rid of that, put that up, the temperature is a lot warmer. It changes not just in the yellows, but it changes over the course of everything. Now you could mess with all these other settings to get something similar, but it's so much easier to do it in Camera Raw as it does it really quickly. So one of the other great features in here is the uh, shake reduction. Now shake reduction is in the sharpen. It's a filter that's, that is in the sharpen section. So this is a picture of a tree that I took with a 70 to 300 millimeter lens and I was pretty far away from this tree. I was probably about uh, six or seven feet away from it with my 300 millimeter lens. I couldn't get close enough to get the shot I wanted so I had to make do with what I had. Now, in my opinion, the settings were just right for it, but I had some camera shake and I couldn't tell by the LCD. I thought everything was great and it wasn't. So if I zoom in, you can see that it's not quite detailed here. So if we go to filter and go to sharpen and go to shake reduction, it's going to take an analysis of this photo and it's going to make the best uh, it possibly can for it. But you can go ahead and change that as well. So if we click the preview on and off, you can see that there's, there's some pretty amazing stuff happening here. Uh, it's just a, a, a pretty strong sharpen is really what it is. It's a very smart sharpen, but at the same time, if you go too far with this, it can get pretty... Um, nasty pretty quick and it's working it's thinking it does take a, a lot of time to do these uh, these renderings within the sharpen and I've got about 16 gigs of RAM running in this machine so it's it's running pretty uh, pretty slow so let's zoom out see where we are there Ooh, let's go to 100 percent let's go a little bit smaller So you can see a pretty big difference, but when you zoom in real close, you can start to see some sharpening artifacts that weren't there to begin with. But it's actually pretty, it's a pretty powerful uh, tool that we have there. It's not the greatest. It doesn't, uh, it's not some epic life-changing thing that's going to make it so that we uh, can take poorly composed photos that have camera shake in them, but it'll help you out in a pinch, especially with something like this with, that doesn't have a whole lot of... Um, the, no facial features or uh, other colors other than this uh, eyeball looking not on a tree here. That's pretty much it with the new camera, uh, new Adobe Photoshop CC. Not a whole lot of updates, but the updates that are there are pretty powerful. In my opinion, it's worth it enough for me to have Camera Raw as a filter. I used to jump through all kinds of ho hoops to have Camera Raw as a filter that I don't have to now because it's right there as a filter. I think that's very powerful. It's going to be very strong in my workflow. I'm very excited about that. Camera, The shake reduction here, this camera shake reduction, that's another great feature. Um, it's not, uh, to me, it's more like a G Wiz feature. It's more like Photoshop flaunting their muscle and what they can do. But you'd rather get that photo right in the camera than have to rely on something like camera shake reduction. One thing that they did uh, change other than that is if you go to image and go to image size, 
they've changed the image size panel a little bit. Instead of uh, the pixels being up top, you change those pixels down here. Um, so if it's kind of uh, it's it's a little bit different, and it takes a little bit of time getting used to. It's, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty much pretty easy and pretty simple. So that is uh, the wrap up of the new Photoshop CC. Uh, you can definitely see uh, that I'll have more tutorials to come, so I'll keep you informed. Most of the workflow with my tutorials, though, if you haven't upgraded to CC, are probably not going to change a whole lot in the direction of CC being something that you have to get. Most of the tutorials that I do, I'll tell you, hey, this is a CC feature. But for the most part, CS6 and CC are very close, uh, not that far away from each other. I'm Blake Rudis, and this was my take on Adobe Photoshop CC with EverydayHDR.com.